If you're waking up in the morning and your blood sugars are high and you're just wondering why, what is going on, I'm going to answer that for you in this video. I'm going to explain why your sugars might be high in the morning, what process is involved, and what you can do to help get those sugars down into a more normal range. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now, in one of my previous videos, I talked about insulin resistance and I talked about a novel way that you can help lower your blood sugar. And there was a very interesting question that came up in the comments on that video as to why someone's glucose would be high in the morning. By the way, I love reading the comments and questions and often it gives me ideas for future videos. This channel is here to serve you. So if you do have questions, don't be surprised if that pops up in a future video, because often the questions that you're asking are questions that a lot of people have. So it really helps me and please keep the comments and questions coming. Now, when we're referring to type 2 diabetes, we know that this is largely a problem of insulin resistance. With type 1 diabetes, we see the actual destruction of the beta cells in the pancreas that are responsible for producing insulin. But type 2 diabetes is different, and the prominent feature of type 2 diabetes, as I said, is insulin resistance. But another feature is that we see high sugars in the morning, and we actually see the liver producing sugar overnight. So I'm going to explain the process behind this, and I'm also going to give you some key tools that you can use to help to maintain a better blood sugar reading in the morning. Now, sometimes this can involve medications, but there are also non-pharmacological or non-drug measures that you can do yourself that do not involve medication that will have a positive impact on your blood sugar and therefore your A1C, which is your measurement of blood glucose over a period of about three months, which is fairly standardized method that we use to help measure how your body is managing type 2 diabetes. Let's start by talking about the liver. Your liver is a very important organ that does a lot of things to keep you healthy. One of the things that it does is it produces glucose. Now, glucose is the main source of energy for your body, but sometimes your body needs more glucose than what's available in your bloodstream. And so that's where the liver comes in. The liver can produce glucose and then release it into your bloodstream when you need it. Now, remember that one of the issues with type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. So this doesn't mean that there's not enough sugar in the bloodstream, but what happens is your cells become less responsive to that sugar and your cells are unable to take this sugar into the cell. And so the cells start releasing signs that say to the body, I need more sugar, I need more energy for the tasks that I have to do today. And the liver will receive this signal and it will understand that it needs to start producing glucose. Now the liver produces sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis. This process starts with a breakdown of non-carbohydrate compounds such as amino acids from proteins, lactate from muscles and glycerol from fats. These compounds are converted into glucose which is then released into the bloodstream. Now, the main function of gluconeogenesis is to provide glucose to the brain and to other tissues that need it. Importantly, your brain does not have a way of storing glucose. And so your brain needs this supply of glucose in order to maintain its proper function. The liver is the main organ responsible for gluconeogenesis. However, the kidneys and the small intestine do produce this to a lesser extent. So when you have type two diabetes, your cells can't use glucose properly, even if there's enough insulin in your bloodstream. And that means that the glucose that your liver produces overnight cannot be used by your cells and it starts to accumulate in the bloodstream. So when someone has type two diabetes and they are prescribed medication, the types of medications that we use are usually a way to help the cells recognize and uptake the glucose that is in the bloodstream more effectively. Other medications help the pancreas to release more insulin. However, this doesn't really seem to be the most effective way to treat type two diabetes. Some of the newer medications are really focusing on the issue of insulin resistance and helping to really capture the glucose that's in the bloodstream and get it into the cell more effectively. There are other things that can definitely help with type two diabetes. Lifestyle changes such as eating a low carbohydrate diet has been showing excellent evidence to even reverse type two diabetes in some cases. 
exercise is also a very important factor and weight loss can also be beneficial and help to improve type two diabetes outcomes. One of the issues with type two diabetes is it can be a very silent disease. So a person can be suffering from microvascular and macrovascular issues from type two diabetes, and they may not essentially feel anything, but sometimes on an eye exam, the doctor will pick up some kind of microvascular damage. Sometimes we see issues with the kidneys or we start to see protein in the urine or even sugar in the urine. And this can all be a sign that the body is having an issue with insulin resistance and high blood sugar. And if this cannot be treated with lifestyle measures like diet and exercise, you really do need some type of intervention to help to prevent any permanent damage in the body. As I've said, when your blood sugar stays high for a prolonged period of time, it can start to have very negative consequences on your eyes, your kidneys, and even your heart. It can even affect nerves and cause nerve damage, which is why we do see people who have diabetes who end up with foot ulcers or loss of sensation in different parts of the body because it can damage nerves. High blood sugar is also an issue because it can decrease immunity and decrease your body's ability to fight off infection. It decreases the activity of certain cells called phagocytes that are responsible for eliminating different pathogens and fighting off infection in the body. So this is definitely something that needs to be dealt with. And you really do need to get those sugars down in order to maintain a healthy body and maintain your body's ability to fight off even minimal infections. So if you have type two diabetes and you are noticing that your sugars are high in the morning, you can definitely start to implement lifestyle measures like exercise, even walking for 20 minutes a day can have a big impact. Eating a healthy balanced diet, getting exercise, and importantly, also stopping smoking, which is not easy, but it can be done, are very effective things that you can do to help prevent complications from type 2 diabetes. Also, you may want to talk to your doctor about medications. Sometimes these medications can be used for a shorter period of time while you implement other lifestyle measures. They don't have to be used for your lifetime, but sometimes they do just help to prevent any further damage from sustained hyperglycemia. So there you have it. The liver is working during the night. And if it's getting the signal that your cells are not getting enough sugar, it's going to dump sugar into the bloodstream overnight. And you're going to wake up in the morning, even before eating any breakfast or any carbs of any kind. And you're going to wonder why your sugars are high in the morning. So someone who has managed their diabetes, well, will start to notice that their blood sugars in the morning are coming down and that can be managed with medication or lifestyle factors. Often both are very helpful and they can help you to prevent the complications from type two diabetes that can sometimes be lifelong. If you'd like to know more about type two diabetes and even type two diabetes reversal, there's some excellent research that has been released uh, recently. And I will also put some resources for you. I hope this has been helpful and I hope that it's answered that viewer question. Keep the questions coming. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.